Well, on Friday, we often break from the news, and let's do that today for a pretty special conversation with Glenn Campbell. Galveston, oh, Galveston, I am a lineman for the county. Southern Nights, have you ever felt a Southern Night? Pretty incredible, isn't it? A 50-year career, 70 albums, 27 top 10 songs, a popular TV show, and he starred with John Wayne in True Grit. And before that fame, he was the most sought-after session guitarist in L.A. He's the guy playing guitar on most Beach Boy recordings. Well, since she put me down, I bet I'm doing in my head. But now Glenn Campbell is saying goodbye. He has Alzheimer's, he's released a final CD, and is on a final tour. Backed by his three kids, all musicians, he's greeted by adoring crowds at every stop. God bless you. Thanks. Glenn Campbell opening his recent concert at the Wilbur Theater here in Boston. Before the concert, we sat down for a rare interview with Glenn and his wife, Kim. You will hear the Alzheimer's, although, and this is one of the blessings of the disease, he often does not. Okay. So how are you doing? Good. Fair to middling, as they say in the country. I, I would think from what I've read, you're doing better than fair to middling. I mean, your concerts have been extraordinary. What are you, how are you feeling about this reception you're getting? Oh, I, I, they're wonderful. That's, 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 that's been my life, just playing and singing. When people like a certain thing, now that's, if I like it, <laughs> first it's just like, I, 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 I picked that out. You have had an ear. You have had a way of picking the songs that d there's something in them mm -hmm. and people love them. Mm -hmm. But these concerts are sold out. For the first time in my life, I bought a ticket from a scalper to oh, go tonight. <laughs> I mean, are you feeling that? Does it feel different this time around? Yeah, it does. Everybody is just wonderful. And it's, say, hey, Campbell. You know, they say, I say, Mr. Campbell, and I say, call me Glenn. <laughs> yeah, that's easier. Well, and I love watching you on the Grammys. You had uh, these young bands like Band of Perry doing your songs. It's knowing that your door is always open and your path is free to walk. And I loved at the end they left the microphones open, and you just kind of said, "What should I do? Should I leave or should I just shut up?" <laughs> <laughs> Thank y'all. Thank y'all so much. Uh, where do I go? You only leave now or just shut up? <laughs> I, I did, I, but that's all live, isn't it? I didn't even realize that till I got through. Well, what I was feeling from that is how comfortable you are on the stage. I am very comfortable on the stage. It's, it's a, something that I do and I've, that I've done, my God, for, you know, what, what 50? 50 years? 50 years? <laughs> is that... What's helping you maybe, I mean, there are some people who would have a diagnosis of Alzheimer's and they would just, I don't know what they'd want to do. I mean, maybe someday I'll find out, you know, they'd want to crawl under the covers or something. You decided to do a tour. Is that because mm -hmm. you are so comfortable on the stage? Yeah. I am, I'm, and my kids, you know, our kids now are, they're, they're a band. Yeah, I know. I see your daughter playing bass. No, banjo. No, she's playing banjo. Banjo, is that? Yep. And, uh. It's always oh, just so much fun to play with the kids. I, I really love it. We, that way I don't have to go up and they say, give me some money, Daddy, give me money. I said, go make it yourself. Get out of here. <laughs> but do you ever think maybe I shouldn't because of the diagnosis? or? I didn't, I didn't really think about it. I haven't seen any change on me that I know of. If they sell, said I had it to doctors, I guess they can be wrong, you know. I don't know if they are or not, but I, 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 don't think, I don't feel anything. I don't uh, think anything. I don't worry about anything. That seems a lot like, I'm just going to say the Glenn Campbell I know, which I don't know you, <laughs> but I feel I know you from the television show and from all the recordings. Mm -hmm. That feels like, if I get that right, Kim, that that's maybe, you know, why worry about it might be he's a Glenn. He's always a really positive person, and he enjoys life, and he's always doing, you know, I think being on stage and out touring with his kids is exactly what he wants to do. But did you worry so, about it? Yeah, there were times when I when I worried, you know, should we be still out there doing this? Would it be better to retire? But from what I've seen, the more he does what he's always done, the better he is. The more he's on stage singing and playing and, and enjoying life, the less evidence I see of the Alzheimer's, so. You yeah, just go out and do it, and, you know, you know something's wrong, going on, but I don't know what it is, you know. 
Yeah, that, that is. I, I've always been able to. I mean, I, I just do what you got to do when you get there. And I, my dad told us that, you know, do your work and do what you have to do. And then fine, go do whatever you want to do. You know, you mentioned your dad. I wonder if we could go back in time a little bit because we just finished a terrific book on the Wrecking Crew. Oh, the yeah. L.A. based studio musicians, you were one of them. I mean, a lot of people don't know you were this sought after session player. And we read in the book that one of the reasons that you became a musician is that you were one of 11, I think, 11 mm -hmm. kids. 12 da kids. 12 kids. Dad was a farmer. Mm -hmm. You were a little kid and you were hiding from doing your chores and you went under the porch. And there was a snake under there. Yeah. <laughs> Do you remember that? Oh, yes. <laughs> you talk about hitting your head and getting out. And there was a rattler, too, man. That's right. <laughs> but he was running for me as much as I was running for him. Because, you know, that if you get in their way, you know, and if you're trying to hit them, they bite you. But, you know, tell them to get away, and they get away. Well, you sort, of, you sort of ran away from there. I mean, it was sort of like, I do not want to be on, I don't want to be a farmer, you know. And, oh, gosh. Uh, I actually started out with uh, Dick Bill and the Sandy Mountain Boys, and I, was, I must have been, what, 15, 16 years old, something like that. And it was on the way out of... Albuquerque? Albuquerque. Right. I finally got to Albuquerque. Right. right. <laughs> then I couldn't spell it, right? <laughs> <laughs> and you know a song about that. Yeah, we got a, we got a song about it, yeah. yeah. It'll be you, Q U E R E Q U E. And that's all it says. <laughs> that's the Albuquerque Spoko. <laughs> Spoka, it's Albuquerque Poka. <laughs> well, you make your way from there to L.A. You're with these terrific session musicians. You're, you're a superstar of session musicians. Hal Blaine's on drums. Oh, yeah. Leon Russell. Leon Russell, yeah. All of them. They, we, that was the best band I've ever played with that could really play. But from what I understand, you were the only one of all these musicians in the Wrecking Crew that didn't study music the way they had and, in fact, couldn't read music. How did you do this? How did you? I had to learn it. I, I just learned the songs. I could read a chord chart, yeah. you know, A, B, C, D, E, F. I showed them, got a C position here, and I could put that all the way up the neck with my capo. You're demonstrating using your fingers to have a C chord and bring it all right, the way up. Right. Yeah. Da, 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 da. They would say, oh, let me hear what D sound like. It was like something that they had never seen. Amazing. And a capo is that thing that you can put around a guitar neck right. and, and change the clamp. And go right on up. Yeah, that open sound. And the reason I took the clamp is because I couldn't hardly push it down on the guitar I had. Because I didn't have the money to. I had the same one I had when I was a kid, I think. But I would just put a, a capo on it. And, and then it real, plays real easy. Welcome back to our conversation with Glenn Campbell and his wife, Kim. We spoke before Glenn's recent show at the Wilbur Theater here in Boston, part of his goodbye tour as he faces Alzheimer's and looks back on a career. And what a career it's been. It includes his collaboration with the great songwriter, Jimmy Webb, which started with this song, By the Time I Get to Phoenix. I asked Glenn what his first reaction was when he heard Jimmy play it. Oh, it was great. I mean, for me, it was just, wow, you know. <laughs> Why? What was about it? What did you hear? If I was going back home. By the time I make Albuquerque, you know, and I cried like, singing. By the time I make Albuquerque, she'll be working. I left some of it in <laughs> because it was just it was it was coming from right here because <clears throat> I just wanted to go home see mom and dad. Then, you know, because I got in my old. 34, whatever it was, <laughs> and drove back to Arkansas. Thank God we made it. So that song struck you. And then you get Wichita Lineman. Oh, my. Very good song. Jimmy Webb wrote, wow. Well, that was written specifically awesome. for you because you had had Phoenix out. Mm -hmm. By the and time then to Phoenix, the um, you were going back in to record another album, and Al DeLore called Jimmy and said, Can you write us another one like Phoenix? It was such a huge hit. And so in one day, Jimmy wrote Wichita. And they called him up, and, and they were in the studio, and they said, Is it ready? Is it ready? Are you finished with it? He goes, No, I'm not finished with it yet. He said, Just bring over what you got. And that's where the guitar solo came in, because the song was unfinished, and Glenn just finished it off with a guitar solo. Right, that was right. Yeah, that beautiful, it's sort of... Da -na 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 that, that solo? Yeah. <laughs> And I want you for all time. 
do you tire of a song like Wichita Line then? No, I really don't. Because it's a chord progression. You know, you could do a playing instrumental with it. So, yeah, I need you more than want you, and I want you for all time. Most famous yeah. line in a song of all time. Yeah, yeah. Jimmy, yeah, boy. He's the best songwriter. Wow. And now you have all these new songs that people have written. You've written many, and people have written for you for the new The Ghosts on the Canvas. Mm. Ghosts on the Canvas. And they're all great. Ah, oh, thank you. What does Ghosts on the Canvas mean for you? Like the ghost on the canvas. Da, 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 da. I like what it says. Maybe there is a ghost out there. I don't know. <laughs> well, it's about people that sort of being between two places, you know. Um, is that what that is? Well, you tell me. I, I know a place between I life and death for you and me. Best take I hold on the threshold of eternity. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Da, 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 da. Best take hold on the threshold of eternity da, 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 da. Like a ghost on the canvas And see the ghost on the canvas People don't see us People don't see them? No, people don't see them. I, that intrigued me for that. <laughs> this one of those songs can mean so many different things to different people. Like a canvas is what your art on it. so your art is your soul mm -hmm. long true. after you're gone your soul is still there well good in between here and there there's a place that we can grow I wonder too if it's a song for anyone getting older and reflecting on being closer to one place than they were when they were younger but still in the other place is that making too much of it you know I, I just I take it one day at a time. Don't worry Don't about worry tomorrow. Don't worry about tomorrow. And what was the other, the rest of that? Tomorrow has enough worries of its own. Right. And I said, well, that makes sense to me. A, a song you wrote for um, the new CD is called A Better Place. Oh, yeah, A Better Place. Cause I got that from some, from a saying. I know there's a better place than this, but we ain't found it yet, or blah, blah, blah. Julian Raymond, your producer, Julian wrote Raymond. all those songs right. with you. When he was recording Meet Glenn Campbell, um, Julian kept a journal of things that Glenn would say to him oh, yeah. throughout the day. Right. And then Julian took those sayings and put them to music. That was... So they do reflect a lot of what he's been going through for the past few years. Yeah. <laughs> I've tried and I have failed, Lord. I've won and I have lost. Wow, you are a pleasure to be around. Oh, well, thank you. <laughs> a pleasure to be around you guys. <laughs> um, I'm sure, Kim, that there are some days that are hard, uh, but I don't think there are many. Not very many, no. He's just a happy person, you know, and he's fun to be around. He's, he's, um, in fact, he challenges me because... I wake up a little bit grumpy. It takes me a half an hour to get... And he wakes up just happy and singing. And What have you felt so, from the audience, Kim? Uh, it's just been amazing. Um, after we went public with his diagnosis, they just pour out so much love and affection, and they're just rooting for him, you know, to, to keep doing what he's been doing. That It's just overwhelming how much love. From the very first show we played after we announced that, standing ovation from the time he walked on stage. Almost were, a lot of times. They were very, very. A lot of nice. times after almost every song, you know, just they just are really showing him a lot of love. And that's encouraging and fun. That's <laughs> fun. Mm -hmm. I, you know, Dad said to me something don't cry over spilt milk. You know, <laughs> I remember that when I was a little kid. My chore then was because. I was a little guy, milk them cows, Glenn, and I got a whipping for it for spilling the milk, you know, as they say. Well, you have wonderful memories. I really do, boy. It's, they've been incredible. I'm, I'm really, you know, I just thank God for what he's given me and how he do it, and I guess we'll find out how it works when we get done with it. <laughs> thank you all very much. Thank you very I appreciate much. It. The sun doesn't have to shine it doesn't matter what I do There's no me Without you 
Glenn Campbell. Latest news is next.